let me just know about you that uh, like a functional area okay yes so yes, the function area which we will be looking for the modules like you have general ledger tables receivables fixed assets okay so these yes. are the modules which we will be looking into and a gl a account payable and account receivable will be in more in detail okay so i'll uh, as i understand your technical uh, background so for you i'll be making it easier for, uh, in terms of functional uh, where you may encounter some of the time uh, the jargon of accounting right uh, yes. where why it is debited why it is created so those thing if you want to refer i would uh, suggest you some book so that you can read those book and that that's how you can understand that okay why these things are debited or why these things are created and if you like wanted to know the rules and in detail then you need to follow the books uh, but apart from okay. that uh, if i exclude those things that why it is debited and why it is created then the rest of the things becomes easy uh, whether you are technical or whether you are functional oh, or yeah. depends on the logic what you understood and how you want to do it okay yeah yes sir okay. exactly like uh, what i have thought can you see the screen yes i am able to see your screen okay so uh, my kind of uh, taking the session is that i don't prefer much of the ppt okay i just saw everything in instance uh, so that you see those screens and you can relate okay what exactly i'm talking about okay so yes. basically ppt format i exclude much of the time so i just showcase everything in the application what exactly is it how you can achieve those things and why exactly those things are there okay So, yes. Okay. Uh, Thanks. Uh, the application. If you see this uh, user, you see this user with user in F admin, right? Yes. Right. So the first thing, how this user has been created, right? So it will trigger in your mind that uh, this user is from where, whether the user is. implementation oh, user my voice is breaking yeah okay so i'll repeat once more see if you see in the home screen uh, i have logged in with user called as admin okay now it is audible yes yes right so the first thing which will be trigger in your mind that this fa admin user is created from where right hello yes yes second thing it should take in your mind whether this user is a implementation user or an employee of a company okay yeah that yes the third thing which should trigger in your mind okay if it is an implementation user what all thing he can do and what all he cannot do okay yeah. now how i say this person is an implementation user or whether this user is a employee who has certain roles and privileges to perform it work or the job or duty right yes so user ids are basically most of the times are created from one place called as manage users okay okay and second which is created from oracle identity manager oh yeah oh yeah i'll just what is the difference between those two manage user area and i am okay it user from here and if i create user from here so what is the difference between that? okay Because I created user from OAM, so what I do exactly? Can he uh, create the expense report? Okay. Okay. For example, Sir, I'm still your voice is a little bit um, right. Uh, when you're not talking. Okay. 
Give me a second. So I have like disabled all my Wi-Fi connection, like as I have connected no. to multiple mobiles, right? So what happens? The speed get reduced if I connect mm -hmm. to various applications. Okay. So as I was saying that. Suppose, for example, I have created a user from Oracle Identity Manager. Okay. Oh, okay. Now, can he create expense report? Are you wondering what is expense report? I'll just explain you. Or participation. You might be thinking what is purchase acquisition, right? Yeah, purchase acquisition I'm aware about uh, when you uh, create before the before creating a PO. Okay. So that's right. Now if I talk about expense report, employee has incurred a business expenses. Uh, on behalf of a business, he has incurred some of the expenses, right? Uh, for example, if you are into consulting business, so when you are asked to go to some other city or some other country itself for the client visit or for the client uh, taking the uh, requirement from the client or getting training like uh, KT, right? KT session yes. from the on-site partner, right? So yes. you go and visit that place and you, uh, many times you might incur some of the expenses for the traveling, some of the expenses related to your food, some of the expenses related to the, uh, where you have stayed, hotel or restaurant, anything, right? Yeah, yes, right. So now, uh, in some of the cases, you got MX card, so you have swapped those MX card. In some of the cases, you might have incurred the expenses where you have uh, used your own money in order to utilize those, those expenses. Okay? So yes. now you have spent the money from your own pocket for suppose you book a taxi to go to the client area. So you have incurred a genuine expenses uh, for the a client location. Now you came back to India. Now oh. you have incurred around 1,000 rupees and you wanted to get reimbursed from the business, your company, right? So what basically an employee do, they go to the, if I talk about your fusion, they will go to the expense management, okay? okay. And from there, he will submit expense report stating that uh, these are the expenses which I have incurred and he will attach the bills and those bills will be sent for the approval to his manager or supervisor. Okay. okay. So once those are approved, it goes to the account payable and invoice are created and on the due date, employee get the payment for those expenses which he has incurred. Okay. Yes. Now, the major catch here which I wanted to talk about it is that who can do it? An employee can do it or outside outsider can do it, these things? Only an employee can do it. And only an employee can do it. When I talk about purchase requests, who can do it? Employee can do it or outsider can do it? Only uh, an employee can do it. Hello? Yes, yes. If, if I want to request, if I'm into manufacturing department where I need some of the raw material which has to be uh, demanded and that's how I can manufacture and supply to the respective customer. Yes. So what I will do, I will raise a purchase request saying that this and this raw material which I need in so and so date. Yes, so I'm an employee of that company. I'm working in a manufacturing 
department where I can say production area and I have requested for so and so material. And again, it yes. has to follow the approval and many things are there, right? So now, yes. who is doing it? These things are done by employee. employee. Yes. So the thing, the major catch which I wanted to specify here is that if you create a user from OIM, okay, you will not be able to meet expense report of system. No, why? Because concept college. Okay. Okay. So if you create an employee from OIM, the person ID of that user is not getting created. It's not getting created. Okay. okay. And that person is not an employee. He can just perform the work like setup and maintenance and administrator task. Okay? okay. Okay. If you ask him to go and submit the expense report, go and submit the a purchase requisition, he will not be able to do so because his person ID is not created. If his person ID is not created, he is not an employee. Okay. Okay. So, uh, whenever we create a user from OM area, so um, uh, these users are only like uh, technical persons or functional uh, which are not an employee, right? Right. Okay. okay. So person ID is not getting created from OIM. Now you will argue, okay, I am a functional consultant and I want to test for some of the functionality once I did the setup. Right? Yes. Then in that case, you have two options. You create a dummy employee and a user from manage user area and then assign the roles which you want to perform or else you have to use the specific user for toast testing your scenarios. Yeah. Right. right? So now I have manage user area. Do all this task. You can do all the tasks. Okay. You can do these things to implementation and setup steps. Okay. Okay. So it's not that implementation user will be created only from OIM, and your employee who is got the work to submit expense report or create invoices or manage invoices has to be a created from manage user area. Okay. So from if manage it works, yeah. Yes. From manage uh, user area, we can create an implementation user as well as uh, um, uh, employee. Of employee. That yes, okay. you can do both. So what happens when you create from manage user area, person ID get created. Okay. So why oh. uh, these two areas are provided exactly? What, what is that's all. So, if suppose, yeah, that's again a security, right? Suppose if you are a system administrator, okay, yeah. and uh, you have been created from OIM. So, in that case, you will not be able to do anything if you wanted to do. Yes, yes. I am segregating your duties from entering those things from your particular role. Your job is to manage the administrative task, not to go and manually enter the business transactions. Okay? Yes. First thing. Second thing, if think of a scenario where I have I'm a consultant and I have to support for the production environment. Okay? Yes. If many cases business will not allow a a functional consultant to have an access to the production for their support job. Yes, yes, right. They will give the development instance and will say that you please troubleshoot all the issues in development instance. Yes, right. But in some cases, there could be uh, some company or client may give access to production where he will create the user from OIM. Okay. okay? Now, this person, I am a functional consultant and I am supporting a business. Okay? 
Now, if I have to do some setup and maintenance task, if I am told to do those setup and maintenance task in production, many times what happens, the business users do, do those things. The function consultant will prepare all the test script, all the documentation and will pass on to the user yes, to configure sir. those things in the production. Yes, but in sir. many projects, it doesn't happen the same way. If client is like require the work to be done by the consultant, then in those cases, he give the access through OIM where he can control these things where the consultant cannot, cannot manipulate the data, all the transaction data, because he don't have access to transaction data. He'll yes. have access to only setup data. Yes. And setup data he cannot manipulate. Actually, all this thing he has to document, right? So this is how you segregate. Again, another thing, uh, you have various users in Fusion for the approval management like uh, as you know this AME but here there, there's no AME it is called business process management okay? okay BPM so BPM is a, where you configure all the approval setup okay okay in uh, EBS you might have used AME as a technical consultant yes, approval yes. management engine so yes. here you will use for approval all the things related to that BPM, Business Process Management. Okay. Then you may have various administrator for Business Process Management. You can have an administrator for, uh, you might have heard about SOA, right? So Service yes. Oriented Architecture. So yes. uh, it is like build up of many applications. The Fusion is built up with many applications. So in those cases, uh, you don't want the user to have an access to the transaction data. So in that scenario, you will not create a user as an employee. It helps you in auditing. Yes. Okay. Sir. There are many way. Then OIM, why it is given? It is given for the creation of roles. In EBS, you might be working on the responsibility. Here, if yes. all the works are done by roles. So you create an implementation user through OIM. You create the roles from OIM. Uh, if you are creating any duties, uh, entitlement, or the data role, all this thing you will be doing through APM, oh. which is, no, no, not OIM. It is APM, which is Policy Manager, OK? the screen? Yes, yes. So again, OIM is uh, divided between these things, authorization policy manager and OIM itself. Okay? Oh. Because okay. Uh, from OIM, you cannot go directly to the APM. Again, you need to go through certain task. Okay? Now, in using, uh, you will work most of the time with the task and task list. Okay? Okay. So you will say what is task and what is task list. Yeah, I'll go with that. Uh, that is the next topic which I'll cover. That is called functional setup manager. Okay. So I'll talk okay. about functional setup manager area where I talk about all this task, project, okay, export, import, configurations, package, all these things. Okay. Okay. So now what I was thinking, let me show you how you can create the user from two places is OIM and manage user area okay yes yes so this is what so you now I have gone to this place okay and you see I want to create an implementation user so I am this user okay I see all this list and okay. maintenance you see these things, right? Yes, if you sir. click on this setup and maintenance, uh, you will be able to see so many projects are there, so many things are there. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. So, who can access this project? Who can create this project? 
who has two roles. Okay. Basically, you can have only one role and you can perform the task of a project where you can create the project, where you can manage the project, where you can edit or assign the task to various user, where you can give the deadlines, where you can give the due date by which they can complete. Okay? So okay. This project, if you see, I have used FA admin user and I am able to see the project. Yes, right. So which role is assigned to this user which is making him to see this project? So you should know these two roles. For maintenance activities, you should have application implementation consultant. If you have assigned one role, application implementation consultant, then he can do all the job from setup, maintenance, everything he can do. Okay? Oh. Now, if you assign him application implementation manager, so he can just manage the project. Managing project means he, he can assign the task to the user, uh, various user. He can uh, change the status of the task, whether it is completed, not started, or in process, all the status. Okay? Oh, okay. So, managing means managing the project task. Okay? And he is assigned application implementation consultant role and he can do all the setup related to module. Whether okay. you are from financial module, whether you are implementing procurement module, so based on the module, he can do all the configurations. Because uh, application implementation consultant role uh, inherit all the implementation role of all the module. If I talk about finance, if I talk about CRM, if I talk about procurement, if I talk about any module, SCM, supply chain. So all these modules, implementation setup, are inherited by this application implementation consultant role. Okay? Okay. Okay. So if any user is assigned this application implementation consultant role, he can do setup for any module finance, SCM, HCM, or CRM, any model. But okay. if you want a user to do a setup for a specific area, suppose finance, okay? Yeah. Then in that case, you need to assign him not a application implementation role, you need to assign him a financial ad application financial administrator role. Okay. Okay. We'll have this one. Administrator. So, based upon modules, uh, there are different uh, application administrators. Uh, this uh, you see right, financial administrator, it includes all the model of finance. Yes, yes. So for suppose for uh, uh, we want to do for SCM, then uh, there is a different application administrator for SCM. Right. And for procurement, okay. different. For uh, okay. your human capital management, for your supply chain management, uh, for each uh, area, uh, you have various uh, administrator. Okay? Oh. Okay. Combination of you combine all this individual area make to your application implementation consultant role. Okay, okay. So in spite of assigning a user individual administrator role, you can assign him a single role called as application implementation consultant. He can perform all the setup related to any module. Okay. okay? So this yes. I think you can see, I'll show you where exactly, how I am able to say this application implementation consultant uh, can do all the jobs to okay. any model. Okay. okay. Architecture I'll show you when I talk about roles, duties, all this topic when I cover it. Okay. okay. So now you should understand, uh, I'm able to see the project, if I'm able to do a setup only when if have application implementation consultant role okay. yes. and 
you don't want user to do a setup just to manage the project then he has to assign, he has to be assigned as a application okay. implementation manager yeah right okay so now the major thing which i was talking about is that creating a user now i need to trigger in your mind who can create the user basically in ebs you were creating user from system administrator yes okay but can i create the user from uh, fusion here by creating a uh, suppose i created a dummy user and i'll it, i'll try to create a user can i do that no so it is a place book has a person having a role called as security security manager okay हेलो Harshal? Uh, yes, I don't know. Yeah, uh, Sriram went offline. I think he will join again. Okay. That if I want to create a user from Oracle Identity Manager, so what role I should have it? So I should have IT Security Manager role. Okay. So if you want to verify whether I can create this user with is your app admin, you create the user. How you can verify? Because as of now you cannot go to the place called as OIM, right? So yes. how you can go to that Oracle Identity Manager? So you can go to that area through a task. Okay. So okay. if I click on this done, you see in the home screen. So can you see overview page comes up here? Okay. Yes. So in the name, if I give as create implementation user, same way you can use as EBS you were using percentage, right? So yes. same thing you can use it here for. Suppose you don't want to give full name, then you can use the percentage. So if I click here in the search, see create implementation user task came up here. Yes, I know. Now you see this is green. This can you see the color of this task? Mm, sorry. The arrow color of this task. Can you see arrow is in green color? Yes, it is in green. Yes. So, how you can identify whether this user has this task enabled or disabled? If it is disabled, it will be grayed out. Okay. okay. As you can see, this is not grayed out. The color of green going up here, right? And if yes. I click here, go to task, I am able to click this task. So, why I was able to do so? Because uh, this user, F admin user. Has a role called as IT security manager. Okay. Okay. So the navigation will be so, uh, home okay. and directly. You can click on the go old task. 
you can okay. name as implementation user, create implementation user. So these are the shortcuts. As you work, uh, most of the time you will learn the name. Okay? okay. So basically you can go to this old task, you can give the task name as create implementation user. You can see full name is create implementation yes. user yes. and click on task, go to task button. So it will take you to the Oracle Identity Manager self-service page. Okay? Now you click on this administration. As you are an administrator, you can create the users. Then in that case, you need to click on administration. If okay. I click on this administration, I go to a second page where you will see various things will be there. You can create role, you can create the user, you can provision or assign a role to a particular user. Okay. So this will comes up here. Can you see this page? In the welcome page you will see uh, you can search the user, you can create the user, you can search the role, you can create the roles. No, because right now the create role is not yes. enabled. Yes. Okay. Now if you see here in the left hand side, you can search the user, you can search the organization, you can search the roles. Okay. How many roles are there in a system if you want to find out then you can choose a role and you can click on this task. If you don't know a specific role name then click on this arrow button, search button and it will show you all the roles which is already there in the application. Okay. 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 These are the, if you want to know how many users are there then simply you just click here and you will see right now only this number of users are there in a Yes. Okay. Fine. Now, as I was saying that okay, if a admin user is having a implement a IT security manager role or not, it it was having it because of that you were able to do yes, this yes. page. Yes. So if I click this display name, okay, it will go to this F admin page. This okay. page has put about the attribute is nothing but the information related to the user. Okay. What yes. role has been assigned to this user is here. You what you can see here. Okay. So yes. he has been assigned these many roles. If you see here, he is assigned IT security manager role. Okay. Yes. So uh, you can rework this role, you can assign more roles by clicking on this assign plus button. Okay? Okay. So, uh, so we can assign this uh, role for a particular period as well? Yes, you can do so. Uh, second, if I want to add, so should I get the end date? Because most of the time end date has to be there. Yeah, right. I'll just add one role. Suppose administrator, if I try to add, sorry, it is not no, no, you will not have here. Suppose if you want to add any role to a particular user, right? Okay. Then what happens? Uh, in EBS, you were able to assign the responsibility and you were able to give the end date, start yes. date and end date for the responsibility. But yes. in Fusion, you don't have that. Uh, you can assign the day you want to uh, remove, you have to revoke it. Okay. Because at the time of assigning, you will not get the uh, date of this role. Just okay. if I click on this assign role, right? If I add a table related to role related to table, suppose if I want to. So suppose I want to add this role, account table. If I click on this add, uh, it directly add to the application. Now you're getting this error, I'll put this. There's some issue with this application. I'll be resolving this issue. Okay, because of this, okay. whatever rule I'm trying to add, it is not adding up to. Okay. Yeah. So what happens? Uh, once I click on this assign button, so it does not ask me anything. It just pop up and it is added here in the dashboard, which you see here in the roles tab. 
Okay. I've got the pop up saying that okay, this is what the start date of a role, and you can give the end date. Then in those cases, you can do it. But in Fusion, right now, it has not come up. The requirement okay. which you have that can I have the end date for particular uh, roles which is assigned to this user? So we don't have it. Okay. If I click on this generate content, so I can control or not from here. From here also you cannot control because this gives information related to the role which is related to this particular user. Okay, this information related to the role, so you don't have it. Okay. Yes. Now you can do a management of this user. You can set it. You can lock the account. You can disable the user. You can delete the user in system which was in your EBS, you cannot delete the user. But you have the option here to delete the user. Okay. Now, I was talking about to how we can create the user. So that's what I'm going to deal with that. Okay. So now, if you click here, the create user, I information which you need to give is what is the last name and organization by default you have to check as excellent okay you have I'll just show you let me give the information actually organization should come up so as these users are created, it has an organization which is this. Accelerate. Okay. So same way I should be able to get those organizations there. So if I click this create user and if I go to this organization, I should be able to get that organization name. So it is not coming up here as of now. We just give a user demo. And let me try now if it comes here. So again, there's some issue with creation of user. Let me check with uh, the administrator of this application because there may, might be some issues. Okay. I have to check with the respective team. I am not able to create why is not coming up. By default, if I click this arrow, one organization which is excellent will come up. Okay? Yeah. Right now it is not coming up. So if it doesn't if, because that is a mandatory one. If, if yeah, it's coming up here, you cannot do anything. Why by default it is taking on this username and password? Let me try this time. Okay. So I think I thought of creating the user. So it's been restricted, I believe. So that's what the question is not coming up here. Okay. Okay. So let me show you a second option, uh, which is from manage user page. Okay. Yeah. From where you can create the user. So create user from manage user page, where a person ID of an employee can get created. You need to click on this navigator. Okay. And under manage manage the resources. Can you see this? Yes. yes. You'll find out user manage options. Users. If you click that, it will take you to this page. Okay? Okay. Now, here you can find out all the person, means all the employee which is there in the system. Okay? Okay. If I click this arrow, so there's no one as of now, so you don't see anything. So if I click this create button, so from here you can create the user and employee as well as. 
okay both the thing will be created username and employee record of this particular person whom I will be creating it here okay so manage user helps in creating two things person ID that is employee record and second thing which is your username okay so I believe here in a system I might encounter one thing which I am sure about it because to be a legal employer okay to have a legal employer he, uh, in a system we should have a legal entity okay and employee type I will be creating it so that I don't have to give the legal entity name actually it's a legal employer okay yes we give a last name as demo so I'll give a email ID as demo the rate of user dot com. Okay. You can see the higher date is today today's date. You can give the you can manually give the username. If you don't give the manually the username, so system will take a first name and last name as a username. Oh. Okay. If you want to send the username and password to the respective person then you can enable it here. Right now it will not work as in, in EPS you have workflow uh, if you work, uh, know about the workflow mailer right yes. the same way here it also works in that case so it will not go in run as it's a vision instance same way your vision instance is EBS right yes, so right. Same way it, it is not a production where it, all the features will be enabled Okay. okay. So if I choose a person type as an employee, so what mm -hmm. comes up here? I should get extra field enabled. Okay. Can you see this? Legal employer business unit. Yes. Okay. Actually a employee belongs to a legal em legal entity in fusion. Okay. Uh, in your uh, EBS, it was an uh, employee uh, is belonging to the business group. Okay? Yeah, right. Uh, but here in Fusion, the employee belongs to a legal entity. Legal entity will be a legal employer as well as. Okay? Uh, you will see the architecture hierarchy of the org structure of the Fusion, which I'll showcase. Okay? So I think everybody has created here. And this is a blank instance, okay? So I should not see anything. I am not able to see anything, okay? Yes. If there was anything, then I should see here legal employer, business unit. So and this is a blank instance, so we will not have anything. If I click on this advanced search, it's not blank. It's not blank. If I click search, anybody created legal entity? So nobody has created. Okay. Choose country. I think both the things are restricted as of now. To figure to do these things, I need to have configured all these things. Yeah. Okay. So before that, we need to create a legal entity. Yes. Right. Thing I can show you only when I have configured all the things, a common application setup, uh, which is related to your GL. Okay. Okay. Let me see for the contingent worker. Okay. If I choose the contingent worker, then I should not ask these things again it's asked okay okay this thing also can, we cannot do it but you should understand uh, what exactly I meant to say uh, you can create the this thing we will do later point of time for today you just understand uh, if I want to create a user from here you just have to give the last name name email ID hire date and if you want to give the username as per your specific you can give the, that thing or else uh, you can leave this blank it will take first name and last name as a username 
Okay. And you can choose the present type. You can assign the legal employer and business unit to which it belongs to. And yes. you can click save and close and get created. Okay. Now yes. you will wonder want to log in, so what is the password? Go to OIM, user which you created, username. Suppose if you have given the username here, well and fine. If you have not given, then remember it is user, username is nothing but last name and first name. Okay. So you can search from here. Once you search that, uh, open the user, suppose I got this user, you click the, that one, you go here, click on this reset password. Okay. okay. Click on this reset password, uh, choose here manual change password, this checkbox will email the new password to the user, anyway it will not work because of that I am saying that you should not enable it. Then give the password that you want to give. Okay, and yes. click reset password. As for the okay. password policy, you enter the password and click reset password. So once this is done, yes. then you log in with the username which you see here. A account setting, under account setting you will have the user login as FA admin in this case. In your case, it will be different user ID. Okay? Yeah, right. Yes. So you log in, for the first time it will ask you to change the password. Okay. Same way in EBS, yes. when you, uh, when your system administrator change the password, when you log in with that user, uh, what happens? It asks you to change the password. Okay. Yeah, right. Same way in Fusion, you have that option where once you log in with that username and password, uh, it will ask you to the, change the password for the first time. Okay. Yes. So okay. and from OAM to create the user was a simple step where you have to give the first name, last name, organization name and you need to choose the user type and you uh, need to give user. Here, here also employee is there, right? Full user employee, what is that? Uh, this one, right? You say this one. Full user type. Right? So, I, here full time user, this type it is there, okay? Uh, that's what I want to tell you. Even you have this many type, okay? In OIM. Okay. If you create a user from here, his person ID will not be created. Okay? Okay. His person ID will not get created. That thing you can see in the down. Attributes. I can tell that this okay. is not, this user is not an employee. Because his person ID is not created. Yeah. Okay? So if I would have created yeah. the employee from manage user, then his person ID will be coming up here which you will be able to see. Okay? Yes. This is the type which you have given. So, when the administrator would have created this username, then he would have given the type as full-time employee. But, in real case, he is not an employee. He is just an administrator who can create yes. the user, who can assign the roles to the various user, who can create the roles. This job he can do it. Okay, he can revoke the roles. This is what uh, I wanted to tell you. And now let me cover the users. Okay, and for you also, I'll make it easy to how I will be, or you can even create the user. Let me just uh, resolve that, those issues. Why that is happening? Okay, why the organization not coming up here? So again need to log in through this OAM server, it can be that is so, okay? So, I'll click on this maintenance, self-structure maintenance and, okay, so let me go with the next topic, uh, which I'll just cover in other, uh, for another 10 to 15 minutes and then we can wind up and we can start from tomorrow in a, uh, what do I say, in a better way, okay? we are okay. able to do all these things because this is how all this thing uh, I should resolve it, only it will be easy for you. Uh, for you, if you try to, suppose I taught you to create the user, if you are not able to create it, then nothing works, right? Yeah. yeah. So, 
resolve those things so that you can create it so that you can practice it okay yes. so if you say i'll just talk about the function setup manager which is the next topic so what exactly the function setup manager does so he can create you a project okay he can means a function setup manager you think that is a manager actually that is not the case function setup manager is a work area which you have, you are seeing here in this home page setup and maintenance page right in the left hand side yes you are seeing the task task related to implementation task related to the setup data export import object business object and in the right hand side you see in the center of the page a overview related to the implementation project which is going on how many are unassigned how many are assigned this is just a dashboard of the project status okay oh. right if you say uh, it shows you in a diagram which consists of your pie chart and bar chart okay yes yes so if you see here getting started implementation they can talk about this application which is configured for this particular enterprise okay means these are okay. the various application available in this particular reason okay so these things you will see this many modules you can identify there are some modules called as customer data management financials use and accounting hub material management and logistic so if you identify some of your uh, module related to ebs you can identify your financials material management is related to your inventory okay then okay. you have equipment related to your purchasing uh, you have yes. right some of, uh, like project management there you have project and billing project costing all these things will be in the project management okay project execution management and project financial management now this project management again related to your inventory okay so here it it is in a vast way which was not in your evs okay so project management okay. will have a very module inside it again like your financials so as we will be dealing with this finances you see this many are offering which is given by the user application as of now in this this is the release 9 version okay so currently we have released 11 version now 12 now it's 12 okay this is 9 version yeah this is the 9 version oh okay now if i go to this configure of offering you see these are the things which is configured which is enabled which is disabled you can enable and disable the features the solution which is offered by the oracle okay okay so these are the module related features talk about financials so which all things enabled with all things are not enabled for which you can do implementation for which you cannot do implementation those things you see here okay so these are the offering which is there which you can configure which you can edit it but most of the time you should not do anything because these are the what see it which is given to you okay oh, okay so here just you can see the offering uh, configuration offering related to all the module if you talk about your financials in financials you have many modules so related to those things also you can see your main what all the offerings you have now you can copy the configurations uh, you might think what is copying the configurations uh, in a better way if i say what is copying the configuration suppose uh, you have created one business unit you have created one ledger you did all okay. the setup okay okay then now you want to copy that configuration into second business unit suppose i want to create a business unit okay yes a uh, second business unit i need to create i don't want to do manually 
creating yeah. a business unit and I need, don't want to configure for payables, receivables, all the things. All okay. the setup. Okay. So you can use the uh, you can use the features of copy configuration, where it will copy from your business unit to the business unit two, all the configuration okay. which you did. This is one. Second one is you can copy this configuration and you can deploy this configuration in another instance. Okay, that you will yes. be seeing in data export and import. Okay. Okay, manage export and import. Okay. Now you see here manage implementation project. So this is what exactly the main main topic of FSM means your function setup manager FSM. Okay. So you can create a project. Okay. So I'll just show you how the project can be created. As you see, this many projects are created, right? So how it got created? Yeah. Just you need to click on this create button. We just have to give the name of the project. So I just give financial integration project. And then you click tab. So it will copy your name as code. Okay? Oh. This okay. answer will copy. Then you can assign to which user you want to assign this project. As of now, you are logging with FA admin, so it is assigned to the FA admin. If you want to search and assign to some other user, you can do that by clicking on the search button. Okay? Okay. You can give the start date and finish date for the project. Then you can click on next. Once you click on next, it will ask you all module you want to include for this project. Yes, okay? right. Then you Click here in finance. You see in the left hand side the arrow button. You can expand, expand this one. Okay. If you expand this, you see I'm just able to see only this thing. Uh, supplier invoice processing. But actually, I'm not only supposed to do only this configuration. I need to do even other more. Right? So you know why yeah. this thing is you are able to see only this thing. Actually, this is not the thing. Actually, why this happened because of this configure offering. As I was talking about the enable and disable, so here it is not enabled. So as this is disabled, so other thing I was not able to see. If you see, okay. as financials, you have only supplier invoice processing. So if you add this, you will just able to do this task. You will not be able to do other tasks. Okay. If I okay, select this okay. uh, choice, let's see. If I want to use expense management, I need to enable this. If I want to use fixed asset, I need to enable this for the implementation. Uh, suppose if I want to do for this customer invoicing, then I need to enable this for customer invoicing. If I want to use collection, enable those things. If I want to use for revenue management, enable this intercompany budgetary, if you want to use for financial business intelligence analytics, those things you can enable. I will not enable that as of now. Okay. Now let me add more. This is related to the procurement. Okay. So I can just add those things. One more thing is there. Uh, not not related to project, project management. Uh, what is workforce uh, deployment and workflows uh, development? It is uh, workflow related. Uh, related to uh, HCM. That okay. related to HCM, human capital management. Workforce means your employee. Okay. Oh. So employee will be in human capital management. Okay. I'll just. So I have enabled this thing as of now, okay? So later point in time I can enable more options if I want to. So as of now let me just enable these things. I'll just save and close. I have enabled these options.
so this is a blank instance so this is what the first time which i need to do okay yeah. uh, but once this is done you don't have to do many time like in your case you will not be able to you don't have to do many things because this is already done now okay here also you can see uh, related to the reason specific also you can enable okay okay now let me go to this manage implementation project just quickly give cancels implementation project tab out okay. next so now you say uh, now I am able to see other thing right yeah. yes so supplier invoice processing then expense management so what all module you want to add up to this particular application those things you can add to this project suppose I want to use this financials I enable this I also want to include supply invoice processing expense management asset uh, you have this customer inverse processing you just make it down and choose all these things choose those these things if you want to add the uh, procurement mat model into this same thing then you just add up all these things okay okay I just add the main one okay so I am adding procurement and finance as of now. Okay. Okay. Now I'll click here save and the project. So what it will do basically, it will add up all this module into this project. As of now, in financials, all these things and procurement, two things will be there in a project. So we have not added related to the HR or sales or order orchestration actually the order orchestration is not there in 9 it is there in 11 okay, okay. 11 and 12 order orchestration is nothing but your order management in ABS you had order management right yeah yes right. order management manufacturing all this were in ABS so those things has come up in 11 days so if you see uh, these are the this two folder you see right this is nothing yes. but your task list okay under this you will have task if I click this task you will see these things there okay okay you will be doing all this configuration related to your financial model GL all this thing will be done in the first one Credit paper will be done in second one related to expense management this one as I said this one receivables this one okay so many yeah. options were not enabled so I have enabled there by going to this uh, configuration offering okay so this is how the pro uh, uh, you can assign this task you can open the task by clicking on this expand button in the left okay if I want okay. to run this thing I click here go to task and it will open a page where I can search the things. Uh, I should program or not, those things. This is the program name. Run user, and I'll talk about this later. Now you can see if I have chosen one task, run user, this is called a task, okay? Run user and role yes. synchronization process. Like which you saw, create user, right? So this create user, implementation user. Uh, you see one task. I was searching right? actually from old task tab. Yes. Okay. So this this was the thing that you saw. So this is a task name. Create meters user, run user and role synchronize and these are called task name. And task list is finances. Under finances, all these are the folder which you see are the task list. Okay? Now you can yes. click assign task. If you want to assign this task to a user, you can click here assign task and you can assign the username to whom you want to assign. By clicking on this plus button, you see here, right? Add and select and add. Then you can edit the task status of this where it is 
started, whether it is in process, whether it is completed. So this thing will be done by project manager, right? So who can okay. go to okay. this task and who can assign the task to the particular user, who can edit the task status, whether it is started, whether it is completed. So this is how you why you do this thing so that you can track the project, how much it is completed, which area you are lagging. So this thing yes. you do, right? So, so this download. one is uh, download is file is the yeah download file is the configuration packet. I'll just click here. This thing you see, right? So yes. this download file is nothing but your business object. Okay. Oh. Uh, you will have business object as lookups. For example, I'll give just lookup. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. if you in application you will have various lookup which you have created. Okay. Now yeah. this is example of a business object. So suppose this lookup you want to uh, download the package and you want to use in the other application, other instance. Then same package okay. you deploy means it has been migrating from one application to another application. Okay. 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 So those are the business object which you can download and use this package in another instance. So okay. that thing you can do easily from here. You can do individually all these things or else if you want to do the whole thing, you better go to this manage export import process. Okay. If you download it, okay. So what happens? Uh, it takes time, okay. It, it takes huge lot of time, not it's like it, it works in half an hour time, okay. So it runs okay. for uh, one day, two days, some depends on the how much configuration has been done. Okay. Yeah, right. So what basically it does, uh, uh, you just run. So we, can, uh, so we can download for a specific task, suppose we want some uh, lookups for only yeah. financials and download that? Yeah. yeah, that also you can do. You can specify those things, set object, okay? Suppose if I give one example, I went to the configuration package, okay? And yes. I want to just export a task list only or task list and set up data depends on you what you want to choose. Okay. Okay. There is something here. Okay. If I go to this next tab, it asks me the project for which project you are doing it. Okay. For this project, I want to do for financial implementation project. If I click on this next. You can select the object for which you want to export. Export means you will download this package. It will compile yes, from yes. the application and this you will import into another instance. Yes, yes, right. So if I go to this next, I get the option to select the object. Okay, so it is taking time, but it's uh, like simple that if you click on this next, uh, you get a list of objects, and from there you can enable and disable which one you want to export. Can you see here, oh, this yes, is which the business object which is coming up here. So as of now, you see it is enabled for everything. So it depends yeah. on you with which one you want to enable. If I just change this one, this is this will not be exported. Okay. If I again enter this one, it will not be exported. If I go to second one, and I don't want this to be taken for export, then you disable this way. Okay? okay. So once you disable these things, then you can submit it. So once you okay. submit it, uh, you will be able to see in the manage export and import page. From the manage configuration package, you do these things. Uh, basic information, select the object and schedule it or submit it. Depends on you. Like a program which you were doing in ABS, you can directly submit a single request or you can schedule it. Yeah. Okay. So same thing you do it from manage configuration package and related to 
seeing the status of the export import process you have seen from the second one manage export import process the thing which you have run it it will be showing you here name status and how much it is in the process then okay. you can and then you can download it once you can okay. download it you can use it another instance we so see here upload right so yes. if you have with you you can click here in upload and uh, it will ask you the file that file you put there and it will be uploaded okay yeah so this was related to that if you see here object what are objects are there what are the features are there if you want to understand about it you can just click these things it will show you all these things okay product features business process so all these things are there okay uh, so this was related to your uh, financial setup manager there are many thing as we will do more thing you will understand in a better way okay so just okay. we started today actually just we started today how we created a project and how you can manage those project how you can see the dashboard those thing you can see how it, right yes so in the beginning i will be navigating through this project so i'll go to this project i'll add this I'll go to the finances. I'll show you with setup. I will be doing it. Once you are familiar with the task, then you can directly go to this place. Uh, directly you can go to this main page, old task, give the task name, search, and go to the respective page. Okay. okay. And do it. Yes. So in the beginning, you will not remember the task name. Okay. So in order to make life easy. We created a project, and all the task is here. One by one, you can do setup, and you can remember the task name. If I yes. go to this ledger, if I go here, manage memory ledger is the task name. Same thing, you can search going to this place. If I write here, manage. So I can come directly here. If I know the uh, setup step, what are setup steps are there in ledger? What are setup steps in payables? So simply just search for the task name and click this go to task. It will take you to the page, and you okay. do the you can create the ledger. Okay. 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 So uh, as of today, uh, we will wind up here. Okay, I'll continue okay. uh, from tomorrow.